Hi, my name is Vena. I'm originally from Rio, but I live in Nandi. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm John from Kornabuan, Tapua. I love listening to Today FM. It rocks. Bula, I'm Teopola. Bula, I'm Atlisi. We love listening to Today FM because it rocks in bar. Bula, my name is Tisa. I love listening to Today FM. Today's hit music on Today FM. Tonight, PM challenges Pacific leaders ahead of Ocean's Conference. Farmers welcome cane access road upgrades. And men encouraged to get tested for prostate cancer. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. The Fiji National Council for Disabled Persons only just received its budget allocation three months away from the new budget announcement. Spinal Injury Association of Fiji Director Joshko Wakaniasi brought up the issue during national budget consultations in Suva today. Anna Ravulo tells us more. The National Council of Disabled Persons waited nine months to receive its $1.6 million, leaving it in a tight financial spot. Finally, the funds came from last week and from the announcement of last week. But if there could be a way to ensure that we receive funds on a timely basis, one is that we don't have sufficient funds within organizations. We're not like corporates or companies whereby you, know, you, you can spend money that you have and claim it back later. Wakaniasi highlighted the FNCDP could not meet a number of objectives because the funding was delayed and the council doesn't have a pool of funds it can dip into. Economy Minister Ayar Saint Kayum says that this should never have happened. I apologize to the funds we paid last week. Uh, I'm not sure the actual reasons. I know there was the actual service agreement was held up in one of the offices, in the agency's office, for about a month. But prior to that, I do not know what emanated, you know, whether it was because of lack of accounts being submitted on time or whether the RIEs were submitted on, not on time, etc. So I'm not quite sure. Organizations and individual issues were brought up today with the Minister of Economy, ranging from people needing homes to social welfare pensions. The Minister of Economy has assured that all the issues mentioned today will be looked into. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. Prime Minister of Orenge Mbaini Marama has put the cards on the table at a regional leaders meeting on the Ocean Conference, saying our very existence is threatened. As co-chair of the UN Oceans Conference in June and president for COP23, Mbaini Marama used the occasion to call for action and support. Maggie Boyle tells us more. A clear and frank message. Prime Minister Varangay Baini Marama setting the tone for deliberations on a Pacific position to salvage our oceans. So this is our chance to reach a consensus that will push the conflict to take it all next. We have the facts before us and we know intimately the way our people, our cultures and our economies depend on the ocean. Supporting Fiji, Nauru's president and president of the small island developing states, Baron Wonga, noted the critical juncture the region is in. The sustainable development goal on conservation and sustainable use of oceans, seas and marine resources is among our most important achievements. Papua New Guinea's head of government shared the same sentiment. Our ocean and its vast resources not only provides the nourishment for all of us, but it provides 20% of the world's protein, economic returns for our countries, particularly from fisheries. Solomon Islands' as chair of the Pacific Islands Development Forum highlighted the need for multilateral partnerships. Ocean issues must remain an ongoing process at all levels in order to ensure comprehensive monitoring and evaluation of global uh, efforts. This was reiterated by the President of the United Nations General Assembly. The Oceans Conference is uniquely positioned to mobilize commitments and partnerships and action on the scale necessary to reverse the cycle of decline. Prime Minister Varangay Bainimarama calling on his Pacific counterparts to lead a strong and united front given the crisis he says that we're currently living in, not only in the fight for our oceans, but in the broader fight against climate change. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Meanwhile, the President of the United Nations General Assembly Ambassador Peter Thompson held a public lecture last night urging action on the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Maggie Boyle was at the event at the University of the South Pacific and filed this report. Enough sustainable development goals. 
Walking the talk, Ambassador Peter Thompson getting down to the nitty-gritty of why the 17 SDGs are everyone's responsibility. The gender is integrated plan comprising 17 mutually reinforcing sustainable development goals, premised on the principle of leaving no one behind. Speaking to a packed out auditorium, Ambassador Thompson championed the importance of climate change, a key element across all the development goals. Goals will protect our planet by restoring the health, biodiversity and resources of the ocean and the terrestrial ecosystems. The event also allowed some pertinent questions from Fiji's priorities against that of the Pacific to the insecurity of a Trump administration. Uh, what implications does that have? And I can say with absolute confidence that the mass of humanity, that the momentum is there for us. We're trying to steer ourselves through the UN Oceans Conference as well as the SDGs. Um, it's a huge task. The fact is we have the resources, we have the bureaucracy which our small neighbours don't, but we never think of ourselves as being out there as Fiji. We think of ourselves as being out there with the PZs and doing this for the Pacific. Ambassador Thompson was in Fiji to attend the Pacific Regional Preparatory Meeting in the lead-up to the UN Oceans Conference in New York in June. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Government wants the private and public sectors to grow in order to create more employment opportunities. Speaking at the Employees Forum in Lombasa today, Minister for Employment Chonio Sumate reveals each year 17,000 people leave school looking for work or further education. Eleanor Fiji has a workforce of about 340,000 people, 60% of which are in the informal sector and only 30% in the formal sector. Currently in Fiji, our unemployment figures that we have is below 7%. About 70% of all of our population is, is either at the age of 40 or below. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of impetus, there's a lot of focus on trying to make sure that we have opportunities for our young. Minister for Employment Chone Usamate reveals youth unemployment is high and is a big challenge, something the ministry is currently focusing on addressing. Trying to have these, um, these avenues through the National Employment Center, we bring them in, we give them some more training about values and uh, you know, to build them up and then try to place them in industries for six, plus, uh, six months attachment. That makes them more marketable, makes them more productive. Close to 30 employers were part of the forum in Lombasa today. The forum aims to help employers know more about the National Employment Center, discuss about developing the workforce and reducing unemployment. In the business sector, like uh, we are attaching plenty of staffs, eh? and uh, like uh, we don't have the skill, basically unskilled people. So it's uh, good uh, to have this type of uh, awareness program here in North. Usamate also acknowledged the active participation of Fiji's labor force and its positive contribution to Fiji's economic growth in the past seven years. Eleanor Turangibio, FBC News. Sugarcane farmers in Malolo Nadi are confident of a bumper season thanks to the rehabilitation of their cane access roads. Prime Minister of Warenge Mbaini Marama commissioned a number of rural access roads in the area with the promise that the sugar industry will be sustained and grow. Ellen Stolls with the story. Satish Chand is a fourth generation farmer with 12 acres of sugarcane harvested every year. But not all of it makes it to the mills due to poor access roads. Three bridge, right? One should be high. And uh, otherwise, all three flood, we went to SV road. Bad roads led to cane spilling off of trucks while being transported to the mill and having to deal with muddy roads on a regular basis. Improper drainage still plagues farmers here and most have to pay for diggers to make temporary waterways. During raining season the farm is flooded and if we want to dig drain we have to pay ourselves to the digger people so they come and dig the drain then the water drain out. The Rural Access Road project has also identified 30 culverts that need replacing. The Malolo sector is the first on the list for rehabilitation with around 29.3 kilometers of cane access road. This also will include around 10.2 kilometers of drainage, which is a total cost 
of around $3.9 million. Farmers in this sector say they have been neglected for a long time. Sundalal can attest to that, having been a farmer for seven decades. It is a very hard to get supply the cane by the transport. We hire the lorry. Similar work will be carried out in Drasa, and a scoping exercise is about to begin for work at Koronumbu in Nandi. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. Still ahead, new regional tax office and professional bodies receive government grant. Mirchi FM is hot. Men are being encouraged to know the symptoms of prostate cancer and not to shy away from seeking medical help. With a strong message, the Suva Golden Oldies Rugby Club has taken the onus on themselves to increase awareness on the issue through posters carrying important messages. Pranita Prakash has more. If detected early, the survival rate for prostate cancer is said to be over 90%. The Health and Medical Services Ministry says early detection and prompt access to treatment can make a difference between life and death. Prostate cancers grow very slowly. Uh, so the importance of those early symptoms, pain when passing urine, passing urine frequently at night, blood in the urine, must be raised uh, with your doctor or your nearest hospital or health centre. Unhealthy lifestyle is also one of the major causes of prostate cancer. We can all make Fiji healthier if we take the steps ourselves. We can't wait for somebody else to do this for us. Somebody else cannot make us healthy. Only we can make ourselves healthy. The Suva Golden Oldies Club will be carrying out screening for men throughout the country in partnership with Smart Lab. This is part of the awareness campaign. We are targeting 1,500 men this year. And to go along with the target, we need uh, awareness. Prostate cancer must be taken seriously as it poses real threats to the livelihoods of our men, women, children and their families. Prostate cancer is not fatal if detected early. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. A company based in Suva has been fined for failing to file tax returns to the Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority. The retailer, who sells motor vehicle parts and accessories, pleaded guilty in the Suva Magistrates Court on March 2nd. The court has imposed a fine of $9,000 for six counts of failing to file tax returns. It's also been ordered to pay prosecution costs of $5,000 and to file all outstanding returns within three months. A new regional office for tax administrators will enable better cooperation across borders. Economy Minister Ayas Said Kayum opened the Pacific Islands Tax Administration Office, saying collaboration is vital to improving tax services. Sanyani Mboilo reports. The Pacific Islands Tax Administration Office in Suva is the implementing agency for pool of regional experts and capacity building in its 16 member countries. As tax administrations, we are under constant pressure to achieve our respective government's revenue expectations whilst trying to keep up with the changing global trends and the international best practices. Peter Chair and Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority Chief Executive Bishvanath Das says this will help tax administrators around the region share information and keep up with global trends and international best practices. Peter's role is to support its members to improve their capacity building and cooperation by leading Pacific Island tax administrations towards international best practices. Sayed Kayum says the Fijian government is pleased to host the association. We recognize that the uh, regional cooperation has said is critically important. We also offer further support to the years to come uh, through the program to provide whatever assistance is necessary to ensure that PETA actually does play its role significantly. The new office will help PETA create a more collaborative voice of the Pacific Island countries to be heard louder in the matter of tax administration needs. 
office is situated at Harrison Street in Suva. Sainian Mboila, NBC News. 39-year-old Chosu Dolonandolo of Diumba facing 12 counts of rape, one count of murder, 10 counts of abduction, and one count of indecently annoying a female wants bail. Dolonandolo appeared before High Court Judge Justice Salesi Temo in Suva this afternoon. He is alleged to have raped and murdered 14-year-old Mere Alievo in 2016. The matter has been adjourned to April 17th. The government has allocated $90,000 as grants to several professional bodies. This was announced by the Minister for Industry and Trade Fires Coya this morning. The first recipients were the Fiji Institution of Engineers, Fiji Architects Association, Fiji Masters Builders Association, Fiji Institute of Quantity Surveyors and the Association of Registered Hairdressers and Beauticians. Coya says the grant is to support these bodies in providing better service, professional conduct and upskilling for their members. The ministry will monitor the progress of various associations following the disbursement. And later on in sports, Jamie will bring details on major changes made to the international rugby calendar. But Rachel is up next with business. Yes, Jackie, coming up tonight. Efforts to lure more cruise liners to Fiji. And in growing Fiji, supermarket targets residential areas. Stay with us. I'm Raphael from Nepata and I love listening to today FM. My name is Stan Gudla and I'm from Australia but I'm part region from Madraki and I love listening to today FM Rocks. For the best music and less talk, we tune into Today FM in Nasilai Village. Today FM Rocks. My name is Inaya Ali and I'm from Ba and I love the big breakfast on Today FM. I just love it and hope you love it too. My name is Jay from Mapasa. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM Rocks. My name is Naushin and I'm from Sambeto and I love Today FM, Today FM Rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. In business tonight, the South Pacific Tourism Organization is attending the world's largest cruise travel show to develop cruise tourism. Chief Executive Chris Cocker is in Florida, United States, with a number of key stakeholders from the Pacific. The Sea Trade Cruise Global is the industry's premier event, bringing together every facet of the business, including cruise liners, suppliers, and travel agents. The SPTO will use the event to promote the Pacific as an alternative region for cruise liners. The Pacific cruise industry has grown by 43% in the last three years and generates around $1.3 billion regionally. 183 women artisan representing 36 women groups took part in the 2017 Suva Urban Women's Craft Show at the Sukuna Park today. Women residing in the Nomboro Nasori Corridor were acknowledged for the tremendous effort put in to make the show a success. Health inspectors and the Fiji Arts Council inspected the products to ensure its quality. I look forward to seeing the 30 women representatives from the Suva Urban progressively participate in the National Women's Expo in June this year. For those who will not be selected to progress to the Expo this year, it does not end here. Cutbacks in the health sector and an upcoming meeting have affected world markets. With more on the matter, here's Savanada from HFC Bank. Vinaka Rachel. U.S. stocks slipped on Thursday, pressured by healthcare shares. This is after proposals in President Donald Trump's budget signaled higher regulatory costs and a cut in federal funding for medical research. In terms of economic news, we have the United States industrial production for February, which is anticipated to increase from negative 0.3% to 0.2. Meanwhile, German Chancellor Angela Merkel has flown to Washington for her first meeting with Donald Trump since the newly elected president came to office. The world shall await results from their meeting, and all of this will have an impact on our Fijian dollar and we'll see its effects next week. That's it from me, Vinaka Rachel. Thanks, Avanada. On to today's exchange rates. The Chinese yuan and the American dollar strengthen against our dollar to close at 326 and 47 cents, respectively. Closer to home, the Australian and New Zealand dollar weaken to close at 61 and 67 cents. And the PNG Kina drops slightly to close at 131. 
onto the commodities market, uh, an increase across the index as oil closed at 48.83 a barrel, with gold closing at $1,229 an ounce, and silver rose to close at $17.29 an ounce. In Growing Fiji tonight, we take a look at a supermarket slowly expanding into heavily populated areas. Nyan Supermarket has opened its third outlet in Pilin Road, Nosinu, and Director Dhruv Patel says it's important to target communities which need easy access. Kelly Vadala with this report. Nayan Supermarket opened in Lotoka in 2000 and five years later branched out to the sports city complex in Suva, Kalsa Road and its newest outlet recently opened in Nasinu. Well, we have an impulse item and grocery day-to-day -day people need it. We have a bakery there, restaurant there, butcher there. Because we are very nearest to residential area and People, mostly people save for taxi fare. We are cheapest in that area and the customer find easy. Residents in Peeling Road say having a supermarket near their home saves time and money. It's really advantage for us like a resident living nearby to a supermarket like this. It's near and a walking distance and the price is cheap. It's uh, near, it's just a walking distance and uh, the price is cheap. Owner of Nayan Supermarket, Driv Patel says they're going to open a wine and dine supermarket in Tailevu in a couple of weeks. But now with this supermarket in Nasinu, residents are already saving their transport expenses as it is just a walking distance from their home. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. And that's a wrap from the business desk. Now on to sports. And I hear, Jamie, one of the former Fiji Sevens is making a comeback. That's right, Rachel. Fans should keep a close eye on Isake Katinimau. More on that after the break. But also up ahead, Fiji Warriors on track to defend its PRC title. And Lautoka Zone underway at Churchill Park. This and more coming up. Radio Fiji One. and Radio Fiji One. and Radio One. Radio Aruba's former Fiji Sevens forward, who was dropped from the squad last year due to an injury, is making a comeback. Known for his hard-hitting tackles and aggressiveness on the field, Isake Katanimbao, a soldier by profession, hopes to impress national selectors once again at the Fiji Betamara Sevens. Vasnil Prasad reports. Looking cool as ice. Towering former Fiji Sevens forward Isake Kotonimbao is back with a mission. It's a huge load on his shoulders, guiding the Army Sevens team and also trying to impress the national team selectors. It's bring a big uh, boost for the boys in uh, preparation for this uh, year Maris tournament. His inclusion has boosted the morale of the Army rugby side preparing for the Maris Sevens. The 2012 champions are looking for victory again in the tournament next week. So the, the team has been uh, preparing very well for this uh, year. It's been uh, four years since we are not there to the final. So the boys have been uh, bring, uh, preparing very well for this uh, year. Under the guidance of former Fiji rep Chope Tuikambe, the players are confident of a better feed this year. For this uh, year's uh, tournament, we are tough competition for all the team, especially for the army team. We are going, going through a very tough uh, competition this uh, tournament. Ami is a brand name in local rugby, and this place now lifting the 41st Mari 7th title won't be an easy task next Saturday. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Expect a dilapidated South Africa 7th side at the Hong Kong and Singapore tournaments next month. Winning four titles and reaching six finals this season has taken its toll on several players. Stylist playmaker Justin Hedald has been ruled out of the remaining four tournaments. 
Gerald underwent surgery on Wednesday and will be out of action for at least six months. Springbok 7's team doctor Leigh Gordon says Stephen Depenar will have to undergo surgery for a foot injury and is expected to be out for three to six months. Gordon also ruled out Roscoe Speckman for the next two tournaments. Branko Dupree, Ruhan Nal and Cecil Africa are also under an injury crowd. The Telecom Fiji Warriors will be chasing their second consecutive Pacific Rugby Challenge title when they take on Samoa A at Suva's ANZ Stadium tomorrow. Despite convincing wins against Tonga and Japan, the side has put in a lot of work to improve and coaching staff believe if they execute things well, the Warriors should put on a great showing. Mary Tavanga reports. Telecom Fiji Warriors scrum coach Alan Moore says they have to stick to their game plan. Uh, so we've made steps forward and we want to actually en enhance those now. We want to make sure we're not going backwards. So we're working in and around a lot of the play and our, our set plays and what we're doing at broken plays. So really quite happy. Just a few things to tidy up on in terms of just making sure that we're just still lifting the bar. Coach Seni Rusi Seruakula is confident of a positive outing against Samoa. Be physical. It's, you know, it's going to be physical and uh, it's the last round. And uh, for us, we want to maintain this uh, uh, Pacific uh, Rugby Challenge and uh, we'll give everything uh, on uh, Saturday. 24-year-old Cyril Rees, who scored the final try for the Warriors against Japan A on Tuesday night, says he is ready for the crucial match. Uh, it's been going well and uh, I'll try and improve on my game against uh, someone uh, Saturday. Yeah, looking for a good game. The Fiji Warriors have a maximum 10 points after two bonus point wins and can ensure a successful title defense if they manage a bonus point or better against Samoa A tomorrow. Meli Tabanga, FBC Sports. Great news from World Rugby for Tier 2 nations including Fiji. The governing body has confirmed changes to the international calendar which will be implemented from 2020. In addition to shifting the international June test window to July, Tier 1 teams will play more matches against Tier 2 countries. This includes Sansa Unions hosting Tier 2 teams in the July window, as well as France and England committing to tour the Pacific Islands. The end-of-year window has also been moved forward a week, so it begins at the start of November, and the Rugby World Cup has been locked in to begin in the second week of September. Natambu High School and Jasper Williams High School are leading the boys and girls division respectively at the Lautoka Zone. The Western Giants are eyeing a win at this year's Coke Games, but the road ahead will be difficult. Rohit Deo reports. Lautoka athletes enjoying the new state-of-the-art facilities at Churchill Park for the first time. 2015 Coca-Cola Games Boys Division Champion, Natambu High School starts its gunning for another title this year. But what we are trying to do, we are trying to to allow all our athletes to enjoy the day from all grades. We are just try, trying to play a happy game, a game that they enjoy. Jasper Williams High School started strongly today, showing early indications it will retain the girls' division title at the national finals. However, the Jasperians are aware of the threat from other schools. Uh, we are preparing our girls as uh, according to our training program and what uh, the coaches have uh, planned. And uh, yes, we are preparing the girls in terms of the achieving their own targets. The competition finishes tomorrow. Meanwhile, the Mazawata, Savu Savu, Taviuni, Ba and Tavua zones have been postponed to next week. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. That's it from Sports. Angie joins you later on with weather and in the world of the weird and the wonderful grandmothers in India going to school for the first time. That's coming up. Radio Fiji One. Bulan Radio Fiji One. Radio Fiji One. Radio Smartphone giant Samsung and Apple will be releasing their next flagship shortly. Now, how do you decide which device is a better buy? And it's weather time now with Angie.
Hello there and welcome to the weather world. So I went out during my lunch break and noticed so many happy faces. For a while it left me puzzled but after some time it occurred to me that it's Friday. Though it rained in most areas today, it did not dampen the Friday spirit. Now let's check out what the day was like in the west. It was mostly cloudy with brisk winds and intervals of showers. It wasn't that hot so temperatures were cool in the low 30s. Eastwards from Pek Suva, few showers were experienced with more expected by later tonight. Thames were actually at 26 degrees. Quite cool. And up in one more level, the weather pattern which will also become heavier by tonight. After all that rain, Lambasa was still warm at 33 degrees while Sabu Sabu was at 30. At sea, east to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots with moderate to rough seas. And for our fishing fanatics, the next high tide is at 10.11 tonight with a low tide tomorrow morning at 4.15. And for those that want to wake up early and go for a run, then do know the sunrise time is at 6.13 a.m. with a sunset at 6.24 p.m. For tomorrow, everybody loves this day because it's a you day, the, the one where you get to do exactly what you want. But it might not go exactly as you planned because there will be showers throughout the country. Tomorrow's stems, most centers will be cool in the low 30s. And looking further on to Sunday, the most awaited snoozing day. There will be intervals of showers and by the time evening approaches, it will get heavier. And that, Jackie, wraps up a cool FBC weather for tonight. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On Fiji Impulse today, we ask, should people be held responsible for their social media comments? Yeah, mostly they should because uh, once they put a post on Facebook, uh, mostly all around the globe is uh, watching what they're doing and what they're putting up. Be careful of what they uh, post online here eh? because um, the world sees what we post online. In terms of being responsible, of course, yes, a person is responsible for whatever they post on the social media. But of course, there are two aspects to this story in terms of how many people have, uh, um, in terms of uh, accessibility to that particular account so in that case we cannot really judge um, that a person that particular person is responsible personally I think they shouldn't be held responsible it's a bit ridiculous uh, people say what they want to say on social media Recapping the main stories, nine-month delay in dispersing government grant to Fiji National Council of Disabled Persons, PM challenges Pacific leaders ahead of Oceans Conference, and farmers welcome Kane Access Road upgrades. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we are asking, do you understand your tax obligations? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, tonight's shot of the day came all the way from the soccer crazy town. Ba, which is Fiji's fifth largest town, is well known for its hot temperatures and beautiful scenery. The picture was sent in by Mahindra Bilmore. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. Or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. Until next time from the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Mirchi FM, it's hot.